The Denver Broncos get ready to host the Los Angeles Rams at Empower Field Mile High, the final preseason game. Sarah Benninger, myself, we break it down on today's brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos. We preview the game. We go over the injury report, and we give our players to watch for Saturday's action. All on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, which is your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day. This podcast is available free and everywhere on your favorite audio podcasting platform, not to mention a video format here on YouTube. And from the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke. Joined alongside co-host Sarah Bettinger. Both of us cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown NFL Network and nine news, Sarah, my friend, the final stage here, preseason action for the Broncos. It's almost over, and we get a game on Saturday. And, look, we're going to see some starters yeah. play. I know. It's week zero for college football, and uh, it's, it's you know, kind of week zero for NFL, right? It's the last week before the regular season, one last chance to get prepared. And, obviously, the Los Angeles Rams take take that opportunity a little bit differently than, than many NFL teams do, especially the Denver Broncos. So, it, it could be a bloodbath out there, Cody. I mean, it's preseason and it doesn't count, but it might give us a nice little confidence boost going into the season. I think any kind of positive momentum, whether you win, whether you lose, you have to look at it from a multitude of ways as a coaching staff. Now, we've talked about it here on the show. This final game against the Rams is going to solidify in the coaching staff's minds those final spots on the roster. For the most part, the 53 is all intact, but there's going to be a lot leading up into this game here, Sarah. And let's go over the injury report here for the Denver Broncos. Players who are out, according to Broncos head coach Vic Fangio, no KJ Hamler more than likely this week. He's been dealing with an illness that's non-COVID related. Mike Boone, he's obviously out with that quad injury that's going to keep him out of action. Hopefully he could be back by that week one opener against the Giants, but it remains to be seen just yet. Michael Ojemudi, obviously with that hamstring, he's out four to six weeks total in length. Not expected to play here. Not expected to play into the start of the regular season. And then you have Trey Marshall, who is out. And I think that this is a big blow for Trey Marshall, who's really been trying to buy for one of those final safety spots. But with the emergence of P.J. Locke, Caden Stearns, Jamar Johnson, it's really hard to see him making this roster by not playing in any of these preseason games outside the opening kickoff where he got hurt. He's got that ankle injury. And then obviously no Noah Fant as he's dealing with a lower leg injury as well. Vic Fangio says he's expected to be back and ready to go for the regular season. On the injury report of players who are out, any kind of storylines you're looking at here, Sarah, specifically I mentioned Trey Marshall and the safety mm -hmm. competition there. Yeah, I definitely think you're spot on with Trey Marshall. This is really, you know, you've said it before. I don't know how many times. And I know that this the great Rod Smith always said this. You can't make the club from the tub, you know. And so, unfortunately for Trey Marshall, you know, injuries do happen. Um, and it can't necessarily be counted against you. But at the same time, in the NFL, we know that availability is the best ability. You know, if you can stay available, look at Garrett Bowles. I mean, for the first four years of his career in the NFL, his greatest attribute, you know, arguably was availability. He was just constantly able to play. And even John Elway applauded him for that at one point, kind of amidst the fan, you know, the, the fan outrage over the way he had been playing. But I think that definitely with Trey Marshall, it's, it's a tough, tough time to be missing because not only has Caden Stearns played well in preseason, PJ Locke has played well, Jamar Johnson is coming off a good game against Seattle. And then the other injury thing that I'm really interested by, Cody, and interested, I say that in not necessarily the most positive way, is Noah Fant. I don't want Noah Fant even questionable going into the regular season. So I know Vic Fangio has kind of been a bit, you know, he hasn't really been clear necessarily about that injury other than the fact of to say it's a leg issue. So I really don't like that. I love the fact that Fant has still been out at practice. That's a good sign to me that he's not staying in the building and working with the medical staff or whatever, but it's definitely something that's got to be on the back of your minds. If you're, if you're, you know, Broncos country, you know, you're worried about Noah Fant. He's supposed to be one of the superstars on this team. So definitely not the best news with Noah Fant, but at the same time, Fangio said, it, you know, he thinks he'll be ready for week one. So we have no reason not to believe him at this point. 
I know we're going to keep an eye on that situation there. But some good news, though, Sarah, on the injury front. Players who are expected to play against the L.A. Rams here on Saturday. Von Miller expected to make his return since that freak accident, the week one, right, leading up to kickoff against the Tennessee Titans where he, he suffered that season-ending injury. This is his first game, and he said it last week. He wants his first game back to be on turf. And so a lot of us had thought, well, it's not going to be against uh, you know the Seattle Seahawks. It's not going to be against the New York Giants because you play on turf week one. So he has to play week three of the preseason. That is the case. That's the hope for Vaughn as he makes his return to the Orange Blue. It's going to be a nice sight to see him out there with the first-team defense. We'll talk about how long they're projected to play coming up here in a little bit. But also another player that we've talked about that we're looking forward to, Cortland Sutton is making his return from ACL surgery. We had a lot of great insight from him yesterday when he met the media that he's been waiting for this moment for a very, very long time. And I'm excited to see how he does because we go back to the, the whole notion that you want to see how you can deal when you get that first contact, right? You, let's say Cortland catches a slant. How does he deal when he gets that first contact and gets tackled for the first time? Everybody's going to be holding their breath there. So there's Cortland, and then there's another guy coming off of ACL. Howard Okwebunam is expected to play. Really exciting, Cody. It, to me, it feels like, and I'm a big TV shows guy, so I love when you know the the cameos are made. You get the old the old cast and crew, the original cast and crew. You get all these. My my daughter loves to watch Girl Meets World. So when all these characters from Boy Meets World are coming into the show and integrating themselves into the script, it's like, man, it's just that feeling of nostalgia. That's what it's going to be like for the Denver Broncos. It's going to be all these these characters, these these characters that were supposed to play such a big role in last season's team all coming back at the same time I love I absolutely love that um, specifically for Von Miller I want to see Von come out there I want to see a first of all I want to see a three play series from the defense uh, to open the game I want to see two straight incomplete passes or dud run plays and then on third down I want to see Von Miller just just blaze off the edge like he always does sack the quarterback run off the field take off his helmet put on a hat and just kind of sit there the rest of the game like hey we're ready to go. That's what I want to see from Vaughn. And for Sutton, I want to see something from from Teddy Brid between him and Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, even throughout camp, it hasn't been like the talk of camp. Like, man, Teddy, he's really got this chemistry brewing with Cortland Sutton. We've been hearing it with with Jerry Judy for sure. But I, I want to see some some Cortland Sutton. I, that, that's our wide receiver one. As exciting as Jerry Judy is, it's easy to forget because of how good Jerry is. It's easy to forget how good Cortland Sutton is. And man, that 2019 season up there with me, with Brandon Lloyd back in 2010, for those who remember it, as just an, a remarkable season given the inconsistency at QB. It was such a such a great season for Cortland. And so can't wait to have him back. And Albert O, we know he's he's going to be a playmaker at that tight end spot. No, absolutely. I'm excited to be able to see how things go in that regard there with Cortland Sutton. Just the feeling I know for him, the nerves, because I remember my first game back from a major injury before the ball snapped, you're sitting there and then you got all this adrenaline, you have these butterflies in your chest. And then once the ball is snapped, they're gone. It's one of the best feelings in the world. If you've ever played the sport of football and Broncos country. We're going to get into some of the storylines that we're going to keep our eye on and Saturday's preseason action against the Los Angeles Rams coming up here in just a moment. But let me tell you about Bill Bar, the sponsor of today's episode of the show. Bill Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market. Sarah can now attest because he got his box and he likes the thin mint cookie built bar. It, it, the combination of chocolate fudge and mint, that's his preference. And he also likes salted caramel and not to mention peanut butter brownie. Peanut butter brownie is my go-to every single day. Built Bar has nine amazing delicious flavors, including the occasional limited time flavor as well. And they're also the healthiest protein bar on the market today, where literally they contain 70 grams of protein, only 130 calories, and only four grams of sugar. That is tremendous value for myself and for Sarah. We both work out every day. So obviously, when I had a little bit of that protein and a little bit of that treat as well, Built Bar is the best of both worlds. And ladies and gentlemen, you can get your box of Built Bar today by going to built.com using promo code LOCK15, and that's going to get you 15% off your next order. Once again, promo code LOCK15 at built.com is going to get you 15% off your next order. All right, Sarah, jumping into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, our pregame preview leading up to the Los Angeles Rams game at 7.05 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff on Saturday. Obviously, local channels will apply. We're going to have you cover with a postgame report following the game, Broncos country. But, Sarah, storylines to watch in this game. I think we're, we're so focused on the Broncos. We're looking into this week at, at the Rams as well. I reached out to our good friend Sosa over there at Lockdown Rams and said, hey, man, how many starters are going to play against the Broncos, and he says hardly any. And Sean McVay's been very on record of trying to keep his guys healthy, which, look, 
They need that. Uh, but we will see the Broncos starters. Vic Fangio says Broncos starters on the offense, defense side of the ball, they're expected to play one to two series. Sarah, what are your thoughts on that in comparison to what the Rams are doing? You know, it's an interesting strategy, I think, for sure, by the L.A. Rams, you know, and, and I don't blame them. I can't. It's impossible to blame them, right? I mean, they've already lost their starting running back for the season. And, and if you go out there and you put Matthew Stafford out there with Von Miller on the field, just think about that for a second. I mean, that is a, a totally worthless risk to take. So from that perspective, I, I get it. You don't want Aaron Donald going out there. We know that if Aaron Donald is playing preseason, regular season, postseason, it doesn't matter. He's going to go out there and, and bust his butt and play 100%. And, and he's going to give it his all. And you don't want him tweaking anything, just being out there. So from the Rams perspective, I completely get it. From the Broncos perspective also, I completely get it. Because this is a team that, I mean, not necessarily complaining is the right word. But we spent all this all this whole last year complaining about the fact that we didn't have OTAs. We didn't have preseason. We didn't have all the training camp reps that we would have liked. COVID was in the way. Like, with that stuff out of the way, and, and you have so many new pieces on both sides of the ball, you've got to get those reps, even if it's limited. So I don't care if it's one drive, two drives, doesn't matter. I think these two teams are kind of in just a completely different space where the Rams kind of have the ability and, and the justification to rest their guys, whereas the Broncos, they don't necessarily have the ability to justify that, in my opinion. I think you make some great points there, too, because you can look at it on both sides of the coin and you can factor in, well, how useful it is. Well, now we know that the Broncos, now that they've named Teddy Bridgewater as a starting quarterback, you can legitimately see what that first team unit in its entirety will look like with Melvin Gordon, with Cortland Sutton. So I'm excited to see how things kind of play out there. But shifting things over to, I mean, we talk about the L.A. Rams. Looking at their quarterback situation here, Bryce Perkins is expected to play all four quarters against the Broncos defense. Look, the Broncos defense from the first string, second string, third string guys, they have been very fun to watch. I got my hands on some of the all 22 tape against the Vikings, against the Seahawks, and just watching these guys, there's a lot of good, young, exciting depth here. And Sarah, we've been talking about that ad nauseum here on the podcast, but uh, how fair is it that Bryce Perkins has to go against the Broncos starting defense, at least for two series, and then he gets to go against guys like Malik Reed, Andre Mintz, and Jonathan Cooper? You know, I think that Bryce Perkins should get something in writing from the Rams, like a like a stipend or something to make sure, hey, if I get cut after this game, you know, like you guys are going to pay me a certain amount of money, right? Because we saw Alex Magoo for the Seahawks go out there and give it his all against this Broncos defense only to get cut just like a day or two later. So if I'm Bryce Perkins, I'm walking into the Sean McVay's office with as much gusto as I possibly can. I'm going to be like, look, Sean, you know, I need a, I need something here. I need you to give me give me like a box of built ballers or something I to make sure it. that I, <laughs> exactly, man, give me a coupon or something and make sure, you know, a, a T-shirt to remember you guys by. I'm not saying that he can't go out there and play well. Look, this guy made it to the NFL, and that's phenomenal. And he's getting some trust from Sean McVay to go out there and start a preseason game. He's getting a great opportunity. So who knows? He might go out there and absolutely kill it. But my guess is is that he's going to have as much trouble with that pass rush and that secondary as the other young quarterbacks, Jake Browning, Kellen Mond, you know, Alex Magoo. Um, I I almost named all of them Cody, and that's pretty Jake impressive. Brown, yeah. But, no, I, I forgot yeah, who the yeah. uh, Sean Mannion. There we go, Sean Mannion. Mannion there we go. We there got we go. all four. So they all struggled against this D, and I I expect Perkins to do the same. So my man Perkins, if you hear this, go get your you know go get something in writing before you take the field in this game. <laughs> looking forward to seeing that. Obviously, the Broncos defense, looking forward to seeing a lot of guys in the back end. Also, I forgot to mention, too, on the injury report, unlikely that Caden Stearns plays this week. I mean, his roster spot is pretty secure at this point for the Denver Broncos. But there is a storyline, Sarah, that we got more clarity on from special teams coordinator Tom McMahon. And I think it created a new a new perspective, you know, a thought process for me, and I know for you. But in terms of guys who are going to get return capabilities this weekend it's going to be Kendall Hinton it's going to be Trinity Benson and he mentioned something too about Trinity Benson more so in depth than he did anybody else and he said that he's been so impressed with him and that he's a four core guy Sarah what have we talked about if you are going to make this Broncos roster at a position at wide receiver that has so much depth you have to perform in the preseason he's done just that and you have to perform on special teams and Tom McMahon views him as a guy that's going to be a four core player I, did he just give away that Trinity events is going to make the active roster? It, it sounds like it. I, and I think that, you know, because we know how much special teams is weighing into these decisions at the bottom of the roster, that is a bit of a dead giveaway. And it makes you wonder, Cody, too, if, if, 
you know, Tyree Cleveland was really pitched as that kind of four core guy in the past. Does that mean Trinity Benson is taking Tyree Cleveland's spot? I don't know. We'll find out. But it, it is very interesting. Um, and, and you love to hear that. Tom McMahon, you know, he's he gets excited about guys kind of not on the same level, but similar to like Brock Olivo. You know, he he speaks in that same really passionate way about special teams, like with the vernacular that I'm sure you football players you know, who played for a long time, you can understand everything he's saying about all these different brackets and things that he's talking about as they're, you know, scouting things in practice and working at full speed in practice. I have no idea a lot of the times the stuff that he's pointing out about special teams, but man, he sure does talk that game, man. He sure, he talks it up just like Brock Olivo used to, and he's an interesting character. But yeah, as far as roster decisions go, we heard him say something about Trinity Benson. I heard him talk about Andrew Beck as a guy that has a voice, you know, with that unit as really the only guy. He said Beck's the only guy with a voice on that unit. So that speaks volumes to Andrew Beck. Um, and he really, man, he loves him some Eric Saubert. Did you hear him talk about Saubert? He he might as oh, well yeah. have said, man, if we just had 22 Sauberts, you know. Where have we heard be that right. before? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Tom McMahon's an interesting character giving away giving away some of the roster plans uh, ahead of this Rams game. Hey, I'm with it there. Thank you, Tom McMahon, for that bet, though. But obviously, a guy like Trinity Benson, in my opinion, deserves it. And Broncos country, Sarah and I, we're going to have you completely covered with the final roster. Once the cuts happen, we'll record an episode locked on Broncos. We'll put together who the Broncos kept, and we'll see how accurate or how far off we were when we did our initial projections on an earlier episode of Locked On Broncos from earlier this week. But coming up here in just a moment, Broncos country, Sarah and myself, we are going to give you the two players, the offense and defensive side of the ball, that we have our eyes on that you should be watching for in Saturday's action against the LA Rams. But before we do that, let me tell you about betonline.ag, the other sponsor of today's episode of the show. And it's that time of the year again. And all eyes are on football as professional football is coming back. College football starting up here this weekend with week zero action. And betonline.ag is the place that you need to be where you get all the latest odds, props, and contest information, including the online promos of the biggest half-million-dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL survivor contest, which is open now at betonline.ag. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus when you use promo code Locked On. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports action with all things football, the Broncos and the Rams, and they have you covered. Once again, Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. All right, Sarah, jump into the fourth quarter action of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, here on your favorite podcasting platforms, not to mention in YouTube. It would mean the world to both Sarah and myself if you would hit that subscribe button here on YouTube, turn on the notifications, and engage with us in the comment section down below, and also make sure you're following along on our favorite audio podcasting platform so you never miss what's going on with the team that you root for on Sundays. Always an objective point of view from both Sarah and myself. No fluff, all football talk. You get that here, Lockdown Broncos. But Sarah, getting into the final portion of today's episode of the show, Players to watch, man. This is always a fun thing that we're looking forward to every single week leading into the regular season matchups. On the defensive side of the ball, you chose a specific Broncos undrafted rookie free agent. As a player you have your eye on, tell us why. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking I'm looking forward to watching Andre Mintz play again. You know, he missed the Seattle Seahawks game due to being in concussion protocol. And so after balling out against the Vikings with a couple TFLs and some really nice plays, I think it's easy, you know, on such a week to week basis to really kind of like, oh, this guy's white hot against Minnesota and then he doesn't play against Seattle. So is he even going to make the team? I think that he was obviously one of the guys that they prioritized in that undrafted free agent player pool for a reason. You know, you give him the high signing bonus and the high salary guarantee because you expect him to contribute to the team at some point. And another thing that Tom McMahon kind of kind of talked about was the fact of, hey, you know, the reality of the NFL is by week seven, a lot of these guys that you even put on the practice squad are going to play anyway. And so I think with Andre Mintz, you have an opportunity to go out there. First of all, just like with these other players, Cody, you got to go, you got to go cut your teeth and earn your keep on special teams. But for Mintz, he has a rare opportunity as a guy who doesn't have the ball in every play to really control his own narrative. And pass rushers can do that. Edge players can do that. You make enough tackles for loss. You get a, you get a sack, you get a strip sack. You, you recover a fumble, you do stuff like that, and you're going to be on the highlight reel. Find your way onto the highlight reel if you're Andre Mintz. That's the, that's the key to the game for him, just like it was for Jonathan Cooper last week. And we really called for that kind of thing from any of the edge guys in general. But Jonathan Cooper really solidified his roster spot with just an outstanding game with TFL, sack, 
fumble, forced fumble, all that stuff. He had it all. He filled the entire stat sheet. Andre Mintz, you've got to go do it again and force this team to keep five edge guys. So that's the guy that I'm really looking forward to watching and see if he can see if he can bounce back and do what he did against Minnesota and then some. Uh, well, you know, one guy I'm looking at on the defensive side of the ball in this game against the Rams. Look, I'm going to stick with P.J. Locke here. Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson are going to get a series or two defensively, but from the rest of the way, it's going to be Jamar Johnson and P.J. Locke. And like I said, Locke had a really good game against the Seahawks. We didn't hear his name called a lot, but he was doing a lot of things really well. I mean, he didn't have to have as much action as he did against the Minnesota Vikings. I just want to see him really kind of put the stamp on, hey, I am the team's number three safety that Ed Donatel, Vic Fangio, they can rely on if, in fact, like something were to ever happen to a guy like Kareem Jackson or Justin Simmons, PJ can come in and fulfill that role. He's more confident in the defense now than he ever has been, and he's been on the team since late 2019. So he is ready for his moment, and I think he's going to put the stamp on it in this week's action against the L.A. Rams. But now I'm going to flip it back to you. Offensive side of the ball, Sarah. I mean, who are you looking forward to seeing in this game? I know we've talked about him a lot, Cody, but I, I'm Must looking forward to seeing Yeah, exactly. It's a good thing. You know, we're talking about a guy a lot, and we talked about him in the previous segment, Trinity Benson. You know, I want to see him continue to go out there and play well. You know, Drew Locke is going to get an opportunity to play in this game. I know we're going to talk about him more in a little bit. Spoiler alert. But you've got to go out there and prove with a guy like Drew Locke that you can make those those plays deep downfield as well as, you know, kind of doing what core four guys do on special teams. And I want to continue to see the impact on offense from Trinity Benson. So it wouldn't surprise me with KJ Hamler out and, and maybe you give Jerry Judy a couple of plays, but maybe you, maybe you consider sitting him as well, get Trinity Benson out there and let him roll with that first or, you know, combine first and second offense and get him those opportunities to make plays deep downfield, show off his his vertical speed. I think we've seen quite a bit from him in the short passing game, working the slants, you know, working off of play action, working across the field, uh, working kind of the deep in or, or things like that. Seeing him do those types of things, that's been really great. Now I want to see Trinity Benson use that sub 4-4 speed and blow the top off the defense and make a play deep downfield. So I'm really looking forward to seeing our version of TB12 playing the offense this this week as well as on special teams I think that's a great point and I think that the player I've chosen on the offensive side of the ball I think he helps elevate that for happening uh for a guy like Trinity Benson I'm gonna watch Drew Locke this week right you know I think that for him being able to handle be, not being the starter you know meeting with the media look and I can tell you this Drew does not believe that his story in Denver is done I can tell you that according to sources but outside of that he's just He's still determined, right? And I think that we saw a change a little bit because in the mindset of quarterback competition, Drew, was, his his words that he used were, you know, I'm doing everything I can to, to make sure I'm the guy and I can be the guy that my teammates need. But now it even applies even further. Being the guy that your teammates need, even though you're not named the starter, I think we're going to see him come out and go scorched earth. I think we're going to see him sling it downfield. And what better guy to throw it to than a guy like Trinity Benson, who's been a consistent downfield target for him in NFL training camp practices, joint training camp practices against the Vikings. I think we're going to see that here this weekend. And look, I think for Drew, just being able to see that, who knows how things will be. I get, you're not going against the starters, neither are the Broncos offense. They're not going against starting defense for the Rams. But I think that this is a big step, and this is going to be a big moment for Drew First game action since not being named the starter. So obviously that composure, I want to see how he does there, how he works with that second, third string unit, I think will be key. But I imagine that it's going to be Teddy playing the first couple of series. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Drew play the rest of the game, honestly. I think that might be the case of what we see here for the Broncos. So, Sarah, I'm looking forward to all the game action on Saturday. The Broncos, 7.05 p.m. Mountain Time against the Los Angeles Rams. It's obviously going to be on our local channels here, 9 News. Sarah and I are going to have you covered here, Lockdown Broncos, with a post-game report. And then, obviously, the roster cuts will happen in on that Sunday. So, we'll have you covered going into next week's episode, Lockdown Broncos. But thank you so much for tuning in today's pre-game preview. The Devil Broncos set to host the Los Angeles Rams preseason action and power field at Mile High. I'm Cody Warwick speaking for my good friend, Sarah Bettinger. We'll see you for the Lockdown Broncos post-game report.